to Wild Moose. I'm Nicole. And I'm Amy. And we are bringing you a real, raw and raucous podcast. An unfiltered truth behind running a business and running a family. Dive in. Episode whatever. Whatever, a whole year. A whole I mean, year. We haven't done, we haven't been consistent with our episodes. I don't know what we? you're talking about. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> like that was the work. goal, but life gets in the way, doesn't it, Billum? Yeah, and I think there is a lot to be said for, I don't think I've been up for recording either, and we always said we'd never have that presh. <laughs> pressure, <laughs> in case anybody doesn't know Nicole's language. Presh. <laughs> On ourselves. Yeah. And I think you've got to be in the right headspace to record. Yeah, because you're sharing a lot of information, but also it's whether it's the same mood as whether you want to go out. You know, when you've got plans <laughs> and then you're like, do everything you can to get out of them. Pajamas? And it's like, oh God, do I really want to go out? You know, when you've got plans for dinner and drinks on a Thursday night, like in the winter. I don't have a life. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and you're like, oh, do I really want to do it? And then when you do it, you're like, oh God, why don't I do this more? It's like sex, isn't it? Isn't it? Like, you go for ages not doing it, and then when you do, you're like, we're really fucking good at this. Why do we not do this more? This is so much fun. But then you're so angry at them that it just doesn't happen in the same way. Exactly. Mm. And I feel like this is the same. Just like having sex. (laughs) Just like having sex. We're so good at this. We're so good at this. We love it so much. Why don't we do it more? And then life gets in the way. Which is a real shame, because I would love us to do it once a week. But here we are, two months later. Uh, when did we last oh all, Andy Rivers October. was that was it Andy Rivers I don't know <laughs> <laughs> great memorable then I don't know if that was our last one I'm not sure either way we have been up to loads uh, busy 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 bees tell me what you've been doing I have actually been doing a lot of one-to-one work with clients. So a lot of focusing on strategy, a lot of helping them think through what that means. Ooh, my favourite. I really fucking enjoy it. Yeah. Really enjoy it. And I think it's probably what I'm best at. (laughs) (laughs) That's going to sound horrible over a microphone. Maybe we'll edit it out. Yeah. So that has been fun. I think it is what you're best at. I think it's what your apps. I've told told you this a gazillion times. Your superpower, mm. marketing foundation and strategy, mm. and but, ads now. Fucking hell! Well, let's see. Smashing that out, aren't you? Let's see. I'm really, really enjoying it. I've got some really interesting ones coming up. But I lo- it's like magic to me because mm. clients will come in and they they start the session and they're like, "I don't know what I'm doing," or "We're just doing this," and it feels a bit where. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Throwing everything at the wall and hoping something sticks. Yeah, like. there's no strategy behind it. There's no. There's some thought because they know they've got to do something, but that's as far as it goes. Mm. And you, it really is like a lovely fusion of all of their knowledge with the methodology that I use. <laughs> Bang in <laughs> plan. Excellent strategy. Yeah. And it just unlocks magic. I yeah. had some really lovely feedback from a client that just said, thank you so much for the session. I love things like this, but you've unlocked things that I didn't even realise. Oh, wow. We, I knew that we had something special, but I didn't realise how special it was. And they are like a finance company. They're an outsourced finance company. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was really, really nice. Lovely feedback. And you're working with a gorgeous Sanjay, Demi. Yeah, that is... She was on the radio yesterday. Was she? she? was on BBC North Did Hands. you sort that out? No, I asked her to... Didn't I? I encouraged her yeah. to send out press releases to local radio stations. Say, you're doing this. Wow. So, like, give us an overview, because I know Sanjay through Franchise Innovation Think Tank. He's a big character. Fit. Yes. Yeah. I've actually booked my January session. I fucking love it so mm. much. The be- it's like 120 quid. It's like the best yeah. 120 quid Bet. I spend. Yeah. I get so much from it. But Sanjay's like a really big character, isn't he? Mm. And he filled the room with his energy. Mm. And he was so positive and like just wants to make friends with everyone and yeah. have a chat with everyone. And I, we kind of made a beeline for each other because it's the same sort of energy. Yeah, yeah we had a chat and he was from Luton and then he reached out to me and I was like oh a fellow you know Bedfordian as such or Bedfordshireian whatever it is (laughs) (laughs) 
And we said, like, we must meet up for a coffee. He said he's in Bedford loads anyway, da da da. And we finally did. And he owns an absolutely banging brand. Yeah. It is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So much so, if I didn't have mirrors. I'd be buying one of his franchises. Me too. You know, I genuinely yeah, we, we, it. Yeah, we've talked about it so much yeah. and whether we could do it alongside everything else we're doing. <laughs> Can we get our husbands to do it? Can we, they leave their jobs? I, I either <laughs> spoke to Martin, do you, do you want to do a fr- veg yeah. franchise? And he was like, what? I said, but you have to be in London for 5am. That's the only condition. Yeah. He was like, I'm out. No, yeah. it's not going to work for me. I spoke to my brother-in-law about yeah. it. I spoke to my uh, friend of the family. I was like, somebody needs to do Someone this. Someone take this. Someone, yeah. please. You're going to make so much money. Yeah. But it is a brilliant concept and it's still only, what, a year old? Yeah. A year and a half old or yes, something? Yes, 18 months, I think. Yeah. Uh, and it is so simple. And how he could get a domain name, the Fruit and Veg Man. I know, yeah. Like, it just happened. And then because of the domain, his SEO has gone through the roof and his contracts, are like, people are messaging him from all over the country yeah. to deliver fruit and veggies. So then he's so <laughs> franchise. But he's such a great guy. He's really ethical. He's going to absolutely smash this franchise space. 100%. And he's so much fun. He's an absolute joy to be around. So I was talking to him on my... I went and met him on his market stall. Yes. In the summer. And then we went out for dinner and I was telling him about you working with me doing the launch, the franchise launch. Oh, Winnie, yeah. And he was like, you could see a little light bulb go off in him. And, yeah. he was, and I said, do you want me to connect you? You look excited about this. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I actually, I really do. But you were going to talk to him about franchise. That yeah, he it was, was really selling. weird. It was re- a re- <laughs> really weird conversation because we got online and we were like, hey, <laughs> And we're both like, because we're huge Amy fans, we're like, you, if you're an Amy fan, we're in. Like, this, this is so, this, this is, is weird. <laughs> um, and then we're just chatting and I thought I was there to talk to him about a franchise opportunity yeah. and he thought he was there to talk to me about marketing. So we kind of got like 20 minutes in of chit chat. We were both like, so, and then uncovered that. You're both there for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he is the nicest man. I he's love him so because he's a fellow Lutonian. Yeah. Like I like genuinely love, love, love that. Yeah. He's um, such a giver as well, isn't he? Like the stuff he does for charity and the, yeah. the keep Keech, hospice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he's such a ledge. And the way he talks about his wife, like I feel like you can always tell a lot by a person yeah. how they speak about their partner. Yep. Yeah. And he just they adores her yeah it's a pilot it's a big fat pilot it is this is the first time he's done it because he's he, the thing is he is inundated with franchise inquiries but he's turning so many away because they're not right mm. so he's doing it slowly which is really good and he's finding the right franchise partners but he is utilizing your superpowers to actually teach demi how to market her own business which i have never heard of in mm. the franchise space yeah and this is the beauty about being so new in a, in an industry it's been around for so long is you kind of throw it all up and go well i don't really care. i don't really know what works yeah. ignorance is bliss right yeah, yeah yeah i don't really know what works i don't know the industry so i'm just going to try something new yeah and i think he's onto something yeah I think it's really because you've kind of got the hungriness of a business owner and an entrepreneur, but knowing that they need a foundation to be able yes. to set up. And she's got that with Fruit and Veg Man. But the biggest challenge for a lot of franchisees, from my understanding, is where does the marketing come in? Like, yeah. how do you actually sell whatever it is you're selling, product, service, yeah. whatever it may be? Because most people are buying a franchise because they don't have that background or they yeah. don't have that knowledge. Yeah. And so what we've done with Demi is she's on a 12 week program where she meets with me once a week and I coach her effectively. Mm. I'm coaching her on and it's I I love it for number one because I'm helping her develop. That's incredible. But it's also a challenge not to give her all the answers. A real challenge yeah. because my instinct is to go, oh, I know the solution to this. Let me help you. <laughs> Let me just do it for you. And yeah. I, I can't do that. This has to be, okay, but what do you think? Yeah. So there's a lot of like, yeah, because st- the, stop catching yourself. Because he doesn't have a marketing budget, does he? If I remember no. correctly, he's not doing it. He wants to do it this way where he's spending his money teaching franchisees or having you teach them how to run their own business. Yeah. Again, great concept, great idea. We're working on having a marketing budget and doing it for them. Yeah. Is it making you rethink whether we should yes. be doing it? Yeah, me too. Me too. Because there's got to be some ownership and the, yeah. the best franchisees are the ones that take the business, yeah. own it, yeah. understand that it's their business and it's their responsibility. Yeah. 
And I think people struggle when they think it's just all going to be handed to them and that's what they're paying for because it's a different mindset. Yeah. Fundamentally, it's still their business. Yeah. It's their limited company. Yeah. It's not just the franchise owner's responsibility to totally make it successful. Agree. Yeah. However, depending on the person that's the franchisee, depending on their mindset is whether they rely on the franchise owner or if they're going to just get off their backside and do it themselves, which they should be. Yes. Unless you have a marketing budget. Yeah. So I was thinking about this the other day, like what we're doing with Demi is really, really special, really unique. And we're obviously testing Horsham at the minute, aren't we, with that marketing budget. And I just, I don't know if this is like... Mm -hmm the stopgap between, right, this is what we do with the franchisees now. Yeah. And then we level up to marketing budget moving forward. Yeah. Because... I've literally just had that thought as we were, you were talking about what you're doing with Demi. Yeah. Because I think it's fucking genius yeah like what a, you and Sanjay are doing well, it's Sanjay's idea it's not mine it is his idea but it's you that's delivering it. He's just come up with the idea like could this be possible and you've put it into place and I am sat here thinking, okay, well, you launch the salons. How much is it going to cost me to to do this level of coaching with a new franchisee? Yeah. Because then if you've got a new franchisee and we're paying you anyway, then the others can jump on. Yeah. And you can coach them together. Yeah. And then it can be that, okay, when the next franchisee comes on, you'll be doing the same. And then other franchisees that couldn't do the first one can jump do the on next. Again. And then yeah. as the franchise grows, it could be that you have two or three at a time. Yeah. That yeah. really fucking excites me, Nick. Yeah, I agree. It's a tw- so it's a 12-week programme. We meet for an hour and a half. We shouldn't be telling everyone about this because I want to keep you to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but we could, there is this is just one-to-one at the minute. So this is very much what... It's, and it's a complete pilot, pilot like yeah. I said. So it's very much what Demi needs. And she is... If she's listening to this, mm-hmm. she knows... I am one of her biggest fucking Aww. fans. Like she is amazing. Sanjay raves about. Oh her. god, yeah. like that woman. Like, if you just say to her, right, I think we should be looking at this. Yeah. Why don't you try this? She's off. But she'll be the most successful franchisee he's got because of that. Yeah, big time. He's chose wisely. Yes. Like, yeah. And this is we spend a lot of time on finding that perfect franchisee. Yeah. And when you find it, it's like it's like magic. Yeah. And you can see that in them. Yeah. And I think this is his big learning yeah and this will be his person that shows the others how it's done yeah so maybe i think she and i did say i had this conversation with her yesterday before she went on the radio just to check in i said you you know this is she's having some Mm. one she's got a huge patch it's massive it's like Northamptonshire, Northamptonshire, yeah borderline into bedford as well that is huge it's a big big patch so and there's kind of two elements to fruit and veg man. You've got market stores, which is B2C, and then you've got subscription boxes, yeah. which is, they do do B2C, but it was, they've also got a corporate offering and a corporate campaign called Love Will Citrus Free. <laughs> right. What's it called? Love Will Citrus Free. Okay. It's supposed to, Love Will Set Us Free. Yeah. But instead of set, we I get have that. citrus. Yeah. Took me a little while to yeah. marinate in the brain, that one. Yeah, I still think he should put an aubergines everywhere. Don't be an aubergine. Oh, totally. <laughs> I, it's t- exactly. They, apparently, they're getting caps, which Good. would be amazing. Yeah, and it's such, like Mui. It is. I it's think a that's fun. Why we're so aligned. It's so. It's so much fun. Yeah. So if we just quickly give an I'm overview sorry. about the fruit and veg man. So fundamentally, yes, the market stalls are there, but you don't have to have it if you're a franchisee. But then. Main The main part of it, from what my understanding, is you go to the wholesalers, London or Mil- Manchester, he's got them set up in. He's got another one now, but yeah. Has he? Yeah. So if you go to the wholesalers, you pick up your fresh fruit and veg. Yeah. At five in the morning. Yeah. And then you deliver that fruit and veg to like retirement homes or to care homes, care schools, homes schools, yeah, schools, all of that. So yeah. they have the freshest produce that yeah. they, can, they can get. Yeah. Because it's not sat in warehouses. It's literally from farm... Yep. Or delivery yeah, yeah. to wholesaler and yep. not sat anywhere. So he has no holding fees, no yep. storage costs, yep. no fruit or veg that's sat there in warehouses for two days before distribution. Yep. So it's as fresh as it can be. Yes. But there's also no wastage yeah. because he orders the day before yeah. for the orders he's delivering. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And then and he makes fruit and veg. He makes fruit boxes for offices. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, that's what Love or Citrus Free. Yeah. So they've got contracts, I believe, which are bigger. Then they've got 
love all citrus free and then you've got mm. the markets and it's up to you which which yeah. bit you want to get involved in and how much you want to do of each i believe oh shit what was i gonna say it's just so genius and everyone's been saying to him like don't you need a warehouse you can store it he goes no because no. it defeats the whole object and yeah. i literally have a van i pick it up deliver it have my margin but they start at five finish at two yeah and it's they brilliant. do that four days a week. Yeah, or you can do it well, however much week. you want. So Demi, at the minute, is she's got a job. She's oh, got a real-life job. So oh, she's wow. managing the two. Oh, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, and she launches on Friday. She's not going to be able to do that for long, is she? No. Because he I... gets quite a few leads in for his franchisees as well, doesn't he? Yeah, so he gets leads. Love All Citrus Free gets leads. It's, it's a brilliant, brilliant model. And so simple. Yeah. When he was explaining it to me, I was like, what's the catch? He goes, everyone says that. I was like, there's got, it's no, too easy. Yeah. And he went, I know, right? Mm. But that's the problem because everyone overcomplicates everything. It's so simple. Yeah. That's One of the things genius. that he's, the reason why I think he wanted to speak to me is because he's had people in the past or people that have inquired that are oh, get rich quick. Yeah. And they think that this is, right, I'll do this and then... It's graft though, isn't it? It's, it's hard work. It's hard graft. Yeah, it's not easy, but it's a really good income. Yeah. Really good income for Joe Blogs. Yeah. Don't need a qualification to do that. Yeah. You just need to be savvy. You need to be a good person so you yeah. can build up relationships. Yeah. Be able to drive. Yeah. And be willing to get up and into London or into the city for 5am. Yeah. Collection, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to take a certain type of person, mm. and it's 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 really funny actually because as I was looking at it, going, I wish I could do it. Yeah, because I would love this. Me too. Yeah, I wish I could have this, but obviously we can't. We've got our own empires we're building. How dare we even consider venturing yeah. into someone else's? Um, but it's a great. But anybody business. I've spoken to, the automatic response is, "Nah, it's too early." <laughs> and he said, "It's everybody, everybody speaks." And I was like, "So you we're going to give up on sixty, seventy grand profit?" Yeah. Easy profit. Yeah. Because you can't be, you don't want to get into London for five. I was even, like, Matt and I had a conversation oh. about do you think I could just wake the kids up, put them in their pajamas, <laughs> and just drive down to London and let them sleep in the car? Because I'd do that. Like, I know you would. Yeah. That but is, you need a van. Well, yeah. It would, yeah. That big bear would fit enough. <laughs> Come on. We could just we drive like through that market, big... go on, fill up the back. Fill up the back. It's still asleep, guys. Fill up the back. You could do, couldn't you know? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, it's it's lovely. It's such a great concert. And I I wish him all the best because he deserves everything, every bit of success. He's going to absolutely smash it. Yeah. But I also love that you guys have got this lovely bond, like working relationship, this lovely bond, and with Demi, but also that you guys have come up with something really fucking clever with this marketing foundation but mentoring and coaching in the marketing space and I want in yeah I think when I was was it last week I think it was when we were looking at the Horsham stuff because again we're on a pilot Mm. to see whether that will work marketing budget wise yeah and I just couldn't see how we roll that out because you've done some of it, I've done some of it, but how do we roll that out to multiple salons? So we're doing a pilot with Horsham where we've spoken to our franchise partners and said about the 2% club, isn't it, we've called it, for marketing. So most franchisees would have a marketing budget that you pay 2% of your net revenue or 3%, some are up to 8%, but you put it into a pot, that pot is then managed and collectively spent on putting more bums on seats or more eyeballs on that business. Yeah. Location specific mm-hmm. as well. But it means that we can then access things like Sky Ad Smart and ITVX and advertising campaigns and stuff, billboards and whatever. Yeah. And drive more to yeah. brand awareness. But we talked about it at our conference. I don't even think we've we haven't talked about the conference. No, I was just thinking happened. that, yeah. So we talked about it at the conference. And I just said before it was literally like a few days before, I said, I don't want to go in with this. <laughs> I actually think we should, I should like put my money where my mouth is, yeah. which was a massive relief for you, wasn't it? Because you were I'll like, shit myself. <laughs> like, this is the first time I'm meeting all these franchises. And by the way, you're going to give yeah. us 2% of your money. Hello, can like, I have your uh... money? I know you don't know me or trust me, but I won't run off with it, okay? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, we just, I need to put my money where my mouth is. Let's do it with Horsham. Let's put 2% of our net revenue aside and spend it on marketing and let's trial. Because I've never in 11 years spent hard, more than £400 on marketing. I've done a couple of boost posts. Eek, sorry. I 
have done one advert in a newspaper for 250 quid. Like, I just haven't done it. I've found ways of marketing the business that has worked for me. But we're at a position now, we've got more competition than ever. Mm -hmm. We are also competing with people charging a lot less because there's a lot more home salons. And I just think we need to level up. We all need more bums on seats. And there's an element of response. I have a sense of responsibility as a franchise owner to try all of this and see yeah. what works. Yeah. So I was like, well, like, well, beauty of having my own salons. Yeah. I can trial it. Yeah, yeah. Farnham, I don't need to. It yeah. runs at 85, 90% occupancy day in, day out. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a great problem to have. Yeah, yeah. The difficulty is when the others aren't working, it's very visible. Yeah. And Horsham is a much bigger premises same number of team but it's just not as busy we've had lots of problems in there we've got through that the team's now stable like we've done so much in there now I need more people and we've done a bit of a survey in town and I and Kirsty asked like 20 people if they know about Mooies and there were two people that said yes they have heard of Mooies no way yeah most people I didn't even know you were here what is it so we were like there's still such a big opportunity that we're yeah. not tapping into so how do we do this yeah so we were like right well what's the two percent where we're going to spend it we tried a few ads didn't we but it just wasn't right it didn't really generate loads of leads we didn't try it for long enough we, we didn't also don't money. know if it's generating yeah, loads the, of leads we, it's, the, the thing is when you do stuff like this it uncovers it opens a can of worms <laughs> we have it? opened a data can yeah, of worms and it, we? we've opened this massive can of worms with our system and software and good. data and it's great yeah. because it helps me with the other salons as well but it's now something I need to go back to the drawing board and work with my my platform, my system provider yeah. to actually make sure that we're getting the right data in and that we can report on it but we're actually trying a leaflet campaign yeah. next week, which I have never done. Yes. And actually it's quite overwhelming. Yeah. Because my perception, as know. we know, oh, I have a really hell. bad perception of this. <laughs> when when you talked about leaflets, I was like, mm, nah. Oh, God. I, I really, cannot I tell you guys how, away, like, I? how nego she was about <laughs> it. I was like, let's just try this. Because like for the cost of leafleting, mm. it I know that it works, but... You are not 100% sure. I've never done it. I've never known anyone that has done it. I've never spoken to anyone that's done it. But all you could relate it back to was being a teenager (laughs) and fucking lobbing all the newspapers, (laughs) deliveries you were supposed to do. But once I figured out why I was so negative about it, I was like, oh, fuck. When I was 13, I had a paper round and actually we never delivered anything. We used to just lob in the bin. That's why I think everyone's going to do the same. Why would you, if you're paid to do leaflets, what's the evidence that they've actually delivered it and not just lobbed it in the bin? And I'm like, I think uh, it really works. I think this will be okay. And you're like, mm, mm. I was like, I'm not sure. What are we spending? A thousand pounds for people to put my fucking leaflets in the bin? No, thank you. And I was and proper then... like, meh, meh. and then I spoke to the lovely Katie Godfrey. And because she's in the beauty space, no disrespect. I just needed sorry. She 100% didn't believe me, guys. I totally didn't. And I was like, mm, I don't know. Have you done it? Did it work for you? Like, I don't know. I'm so sorry. And then I I need to go through this process. And then I spoke to Katie Godfrey and she was like, do you know what? The one thing that works for me. I was like, what? She went leaflets. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? She went, no, I get so much business whenever I do a leaflet job. So whenever I'm a bit low or business is like a bit quieter, I'll do a leaflet job. Make sure you put a trackable QR code on it and then you can see exactly how many people have scanned it. And I was like, fucking June. Okay. Yep. Nick, <laughs> you know that uh, thing that, I said, that really I said was a really shit idea. Can we do it? <laughs> but you did that. You implemented that. We, we I have implemented at, it. Yeah. We and this will depend on area, right? Yeah. Because we, we looked at piggybacking on some local publications that go out to decent areas, but because we're not au fait yeah. with the area, we don't live in Horsham or around Horsham. Mm. We're not one hundred percent sure. But you. I delved in. Went old school, got on the phone to Royal Mail. I actually did. And I think it's a trust thing. Mm. Because I think, well, if the posters are going to the houses anyway, what's the di- what's, they're just going to add a new leaflet in. Yeah. And if it comes with a post, I'd look at it a bit differently maybe. I'm thinking of the post that comes through my door. If I get a leaflet with my normal post, I look at it. Oh, see, I, if I'm... I just get something shoved through the door, I just go straight in a recycling bin normally. If I had one of... I'm not in one of the villages, so I don't get yeah. any of these lovely village affluent magazines. You would prefer magazines. it in a magazine? Yeah, yeah. Would yeah. you? Yeah, because the leaflets that I get in are... Just takeaways. Shit. It's just takeaways, yeah. Yeah. Or farm foods. 
Oh, I, yeah, because you get loads about windows and stuff, don't you? So I was trying... No. <laughs> Which is hilarious, because we are how many streets away from yeah, each other? Not, not that far. far. Not far at all. That's marketing. So it will be down to the demographic that is seen in that area, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. So when I... I started looking at Solar Press because I use a I use Solar Press for printing anyway, and they have a a dropping like a leaflet drop section, and it's all, actually all you can see is them dropping it into the yeah. litter. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was spenny, wasn't it? It was a little bit. So when you look at, but I love their software. So you can choose your like whether you want a high, middle, or low price, like income. Income. That's yeah. it. And yeah, they do good proper it's a, demographics. It's a really yeah. good demographic. It's a really good way of mapping and choose, and it will choose your postcode. And it will basically say, "This is a really high population of your demographic that you're looking for." You can choose the age range. You can choose if they're parents, if they're not. Like yep. it was really slick. Yeah. And then it showed which one had the higher population of the people you're looking for, and then how many houses are in that population to know how many leaflets do. And you said, "Well, why don't you just go with one?" And I was like, "Well." I didn't know, I had no idea about pricing or mm. what this looked like. And it actually wasn't that expensive. No. And Solar Press is really decent pricing anyway. But then I, I saw in Solar Press that it was with Royal Mail. So I was like, well, I'll what, just about, go direct, what about if I do it direct? Yeah. And it's called Royal Mail Door to Door. Their system is not so slick and it's very much over the phone. Uh-huh. It's a bit annoying. It's not, it's a bit it doesn't really work lots of like email you have to wait for your email to be sent through with your instructions and it's a bit clunky now I've got my head around it it's okay if it works so we're kind of you have to get them printed in bundles of 100 you can't have boxes of more than 10k 10 kilos yeah yeah they're very specific Mm -hmm. and then they send you specific labels that you have to get sent I don't think I've saved much money by doing it direct with door to door because I've printed them on solar press and got them sent here and then I've sent them to Royal Mail. Yeah, you've probably eradicated the saving. I think I've saved about 80 quid. But the aggro, the I could have just got solo press to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's because Royal Mail have a certain system. Obviously, they're getting loads of deliveries in. Yeah. And they want to charge 85 quid minimum for collection from your house and then delivered to the distribution centre. Mm-hmm. And then when I actually picked up the phone and spoke to my friend, he was like, oh, no, you can use, if you've got APC contract, which I have, he was like, you could just use them and then deliver to us, just make sure the labels that they have don't cover the ones that we need you to have. And I was like, oh, okay. But the paperwork that they use is quite dated. It's lots of, P- like, 15-page well, PDF instructions type thing. Well, then it's good that Solo Press have got it as a bolt-on. And I would can... just do, do that next time. So what, would you mind sharing the cost of Yeah, what? so the leaflet printing is £120 for £5,000. That £130, is... £130, something like that. That is incredible. And you had your incredible designer, Susie. Susie, yeah. So her design costs, like, 40 quid. Mm-hmm. Trackable QR code was free. Yep. And then my actual delivery, I think, was three hundred and ten pounds for five thousand, four thousand houses. Okay. And then the other things that we've done set up off the back of that are you've got trackable QR code, mm. and then we've set up automations and sequencing emails. Yes, we have to get a free voucher. That was a KG suggestion. That was really, really good. Yeah. Really so good. on the back of the flyer, it just says access your free access your gift voucher now. Mm. She said, don't put anything about amount because then you're not letting people decide whether it's good enough for them. So they just put it in and then they put in their email address and then it's automated now to send them an email with their their voucher, which I can set to whatever I want if, you know, if it's not being used enough, for instance, if it's too low, then we can increase it. And then that their data will just go into our system and then we just have to manually put it over into our booking system. Yeah, but they can also book direct, yes, can't they? So yeah. that we may not have to do too much. Well, no, because the sequencing yeah. is they get their email with their voucher Once and then it's also registered. got the link to make their appointment. Yeah. Make their appointment. And then they've got two reminders because yeah. they only have two weeks, a two week window to book, their to voucher. book in. Yeah. Not to use the voucher, but to book in. Mm-hmm. So they could book in for like a month. And they just show time. the voucher in the salon and then they get their five pounds off at checkout. And yeah. it launches next week, week after next. Yeah, so deliveries start on the 9th. So they give you a booking, a delivery window and it'll be done from the 9th, like, for a week. It's exciting. It's really exciting. It's exciting to see. I think it's, like, 450 all in, something like that. So 
I, I kind of expected to spend, I, I, I think in my head it was like 500 quid yeah. to do like a thousand houses. That's what I expected. Yeah. But the fact that we've got nearly 4,000 houses, mm-hmm. you know, we're for 400 and something quid. I'm really chuffed with it. So how many clients do we need to make this worthwhile? Oh, God. Well, say they spend 40 quid each on average. You're going to need yeah. 100, right? Ideally, yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know. Because also the clients, they they become repeat clients. They come in at least twice a month normally. But we, I think what we're really good at is when we launch, like gaining traction, getting interest. What we're bad at as a brand is getting new people in the business because we we've got so like we're so comfortable because our clients once they come in they stay. Yeah. We're so used to that that we've kind of sat back a little bit and gone, mm. "Oh yeah, you know, we're good." So we've never been in this before yeah. where we have to it's proactive. Get new clients. Yes. Yeah. And if this works, it could be part of our launch strategy as well. Yeah, which I think would be really good. Or do we just do it sort of 6 months after our launch? Well, we just when the, in. yeah, when the dip comes. Yeah, but it, uh, I'm really like kicking around the ownership and the accountability on the franchisee as well on sales and marketing. This is the this is the point when we were talking about the franchise, the marketing budget. The beauty of that is this would all be done. Yeah, we master it. Yeah, we do it. We distribute. We tell them when it's happening. Yeah, maybe but then we it's need not to... the owners. The ownership isn't then on the individual. Is it just that? for us to teach to do this I find this process that works brilliantly and yeah. then teach how to do it and solar press would be the easiest like yeah 100%. rather than going through royal mail and all of that which was a good process for me to go through because I've experienced I like to f- learn it all first but I don't know if it it would be I don't know no I don't know either but I think like being able to give business owners the skills, I think there probably comes a tipping point on Mui's where it edges towards a marketing fee, marketing budget. And then we just have a department that does it all. Yeah. Yeah. But I but don't think we're there That's what the big companies do. Yeah. We're because not there yet. No, you need to drive, you need to be, be able to buy those billboards. You need to be able mm. to invest in advertising above the line mm. that drives overall brand awareness. But when we're in this... Like the franchisees still need to have the accountability to drive their own business forward, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's giving them the right platform foundation for them to be able to do that. So it's the tools, isn't it? It's that toolkit that we're yeah trying to put together. Yeah. But it's also stuff that we've not done before. So we're, we're learning. Going, yeah, we yeah. are learning and we're putting our money where our mouth is rather than saying this is what works because we know best. Actually, we have know best because we trialed it. Yeah. And I think that we're going to get more from this than we did on the social media spend. Yeah, agreed. But then we don't, we don't uh, no, like Meta is saying one figure and, and your, your booking, booking system yeah. is saying another. So we're not 100% sure how well that is, that's working mm. as well. Yeah. I kind of love this experimental stage though. I love this whole I love try and hate and, it. Yeah. I love it because it's the same as what we're doing with franchise leads, isn't it? Like we're doing loads of work together at the minute funnel fun (laughs) I'm actually really getting into these funnels now that I've got my head around it now that I understand the concept because like you read all these books you listen to all these podcasts or whatever and it's all everyone's talking about funnels and I'm like what is a fucking funnel what does this mean Katie Godfrey uses them loves them and I was like I don't I I can't until I'm doing it I don't really understand Mm. you know when you're using terminology like lead generation Mm. where do you get that eyeballs on this and then they go into the funnel and it you know spits out this and the end I'm like "Uh aha I don't know what it means Mm. and I don't think I'm alone in not understanding it I feel like people in marketing are so used to talking about it I think it's got two, because the funnels are used, you have click funnels, yep. you've got funnels which are what we're looking at for mm-hmm. franchise funnels, but then you also have sales funnels. Yeah. And that's why when I talk about it, I talk about the path. Yeah. Because it, it's just an extension of the path. Yep. You're talking about a curated journey. Yeah. Or a curated, I know you love that word, but a curated path where yep. you are seeding things along the way. Yes. And the more people that you get in the top, 
the more people you'll get shake down the bottom. So what's the sales, what's the difference in the sales funnel? Isn't it's it just exactly the same? exactly the same, but, it's, the but it's less... So funnels now, and what we take to mean by funnels, is very much automated. This yes. is, you start at this point and you end at this yeah. point. Whereas, and I've actually really enjoyed learning about this yeah. and put in, and implementing the process. And we've had a few people that have helped, like, with because we've signed up with Karcher, but we've had a few people that we've found on Fiverr that yeah. have helped yeah, yeah. put into place. But there's an element I want to learn myself as well. So I created all of the, email se- the emails to go into the sequence. Yeah. We've written all the blogs and it's yeah. all ready to go. And then it was like the lead gens. And it's this has been going on for months. Yeah. It's not a quick thing, is it? No, no, no. And you're learning, you're flexing a new muscle, you're flexing a new skill as well. Yeah. And you very much love to like touch and feel yeah. anything I want to know what's, how your business. it works. Yeah. yeah, I want to know how it works and why. But I'm really excited about this funnel jazz. Yeah. Because... Now that the lead gens are in, now that we've had a video created, that was another five. We've had, I've used so many people on Fiverr. It's yeah. brilliant, isn't it? He was great, wasn't he? He was brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah, putting the video together. And, again, when you think of that, you think, oh, God, it's going to be thousands. That cost me £220 to have that video put together. Yeah. It was my content. Yeah. And then I'd done a voiceover video, and he's merged it all together. You gave him an absolute smashing brief. Yeah. And you gave him another brief. And I gave him another brief. Yeah. So he just got it, didn't he, first yeah. time? Mm-hmm. And it was brilliant. And, and then, he really captured the essence of Yeah, movies, I'm really so. excited to see that. So we've got that. And then I'd done a mastermind. So it, it's probably been going on for nearly a year, actually. And then the checklist and different lead generations. So they're the things that you advertise with. Yep. And then people sign up with their email. And then they go into the funnel. And then it's the automated email sequencing yep. that goes on and it's triggered every month or every week or every day however, or however you yeah, want yeah. however we've done it at once a week mm-hmm. a certain time every week and it means that they go in and there's like 20 emails and it's that whole like warming and lead up this is what Moo's brand is all about this is our intro learn about us here do this action this and then everything has a call to action yeah or book a call with me so then it means that once that's done, we can just focus on how do we get more people interested in the franchise model. Mm-hmm. But what we're doing is replicating that work and we're putting it into me as professional. So when it comes to training and products, what does that look like? Because I give a lot of training out to colleges to support the industry and like people buy my products on my website that are from other salons. So we're now doing the same thing again. Yeah which I am excited about because we just don't talk about the products and the training. I don't promote it because it's just one other part of the business that I just haven't got time to focus on and it's there for my own salons. Mm -hmm. And the beauty with funnels is you do this big chunk of work once, Mm. you set up everything that you need and it's automated. Yeah. So really the only things that you need to control is the bit that goes in the top yeah and the delivery at the bottom so what we're doing now is working on the ads right so we're working on a target like demographic the target audience and we're going to do a little bit of google ad fun as well yes using all of your super tech stuff (laughs) don't know about that yeah (laughs) Yeah. well that again i want to learn it i want to understand it's not a control freak thing i just genuinely love it and i want to understand it but i can't let someone else run off with that because I find it really interesting. I, I notice. <laughs> I know. Um, I think that's good. Like you're taking the responsibility. One, yes, you enjoy it, but two, you need to feel everything that touches your business. Mm. Like that's there's nothing wrong with that. It means that you can stand up in something in front of your franchisees and say, "This works." I think I that's. No, it. Works. I think that's actually why I yeah. want to know about it. Yeah. Because I want to be certain. There's an element like. I trust what anyone else is doing. But with that video, I was like, can you make sure it includes this? Can you make sure it includes that? Because I know what people want and what they like about my brand. Yeah. And I want to make sure the message is right. Yeah. But once we've got it nailed, like now, and we're doing that, we're doing like the avatar, we've done all of that, we've got the funnels going. But also we're looking at locations at the same time. That's exciting, isn't it? So we're trying to mirror it. You know, there's no point in us targeting an area like, I mean, it's pretty obvious, Hertfordshire and Buckinghamshire. I've got Sophie looking for premises on a weekly basis. There's just nothing available commercial mm-hmm. premises wise. Mm-hmm. 
So we no point advertising. we've given her the list of towns that I'm targeting, and yep. she comes back and says what ones have got properties in. So then we will literally turn it on for a certain area. And you said something to me yesterday, which really sat with me. And you were like, we've said we only want three franchisees, mm. new franchise territories mm -hmm. between now and next summer. Mm -hmm. What happens if you get more? And I was like, I, I don't I haven't even thought about that because I'm looking at it from the other aspect of I need to I hope this works. I yeah. really want three. Mm. And the reason I've said three is because that's manageable. That means that I can bring in somebody else mm -hmm. to support me with my operations and my all of that. But I can I know that I'm comfortable. I know how much effort goes into a launch. Although now I'm outsourcing a lot to you, mm. <laughs> and Yaz is taking on quite a lot. Yep. And I've got other people in the wings that are yes, ready. Which you know? is great. It yeah. is. And I've built up my training support and I've built all this. But I won't ever do a launch end of July and August again. It's just too busy for my own teams to pull them yep. and resources. So we've literally got between now and June. Mm. And I was like, I can do three in that time yep. comfortably. Yeah. And you were like, but what if we do more? And I was like, well, I'll put them on a wait list. No, like, they'd have to go on a wait list because I, I wouldn't want to take on more and then not deliver. Mm -hmm. I'll, and the wait list would just be until I find the right staff and the right people to then bring in to support me in those areas. But I have got these people that have left the company but willing to come back on a consultant basis. And you were like, well, I think that's the problem we're going to have. And I was like, you really, really? Well, you think, like, we've not, sorry, I will mm. always say we, but you have not done any marketing on Never. franchise. And you've got... It's just emails for our own existing database. Okay. And you're still, how many leads have you mm. got live at the minute? I've got one that wants uh, Chichester. Yeah. And that is a client and staff member combo. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yes. And then I've actually had a random call the other day and she's interested in Canterbury. Right. And so and she was lovely and she found me on Google, just Googled Spa Franchise, I mean. So you've got three on the go at the minute anyway. You've had the one in Scotland too. Oh, uh, I don't think that, I don't think anything will come of that. I think her kid's a bit too young, but it might might be bubbling away under the surface. But even so, that's three people. Let's just call it two. Yeah, by not doing anything. Yeah. Pretty much, like just emails. Yeah. That's quite significant. And now yeah. we're turning on... Some ads. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. And we're literally just trialling four different types for a pound a day each just yeah. to see yeah. what happens. And I think this is what I find so exciting because I'm like, what What if this does work? You know, yeah. what if all of this work that we put in place does work? Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Nick, turn off the ads. I can't <laughs> deal with it. Like, that's the position we need to be in. And there was an element of me, I think, that I read so many business books. I listen to so many poddies. And there's always that there's always that business entrepreneur's journey when they've found something and all of a sudden it works. Yeah. And all of a sudden their it business goes from them playing around yeah. to scaling. Yeah. And every time I think about what we've do what we're doing and the work that's gone into it, yeah, I get this like butterfly. Buzz. Yeah, yeah. You know when you get that feeling, you're like, I think this is, I think this is it. Mm. I think this is going to work now, and mm. I think this is all these years where we've been like figuring shit out with no money. Yeah. What if it's this? What if this is the thing that works? Yeah. Because what excites me about that <laughs> is me and you helping other businesses do it. That's really, I find that really exciting. What do you mean? Because I what's think... This, what's this on the vision board that I don't no, know this about? Is... Fucking hell. I've not actually spoke about this to anyone. But what excites me, like the, every, I can't tell you the butterflies I get. And I've got it now when I think... Fanny oh, flutters? No, no tummy flutters. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no fanny flutters here, love. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe later. What are you doing down? Like... <laughs> I'm not old. <laughs> so, what excites me? And I can't me take this build up. Like, <laughs> I am about to work myself. What, what excites you? Come on! What excites me is if this works, when, when it works, it because me. I really believe that it, I genuinely believe this is. Not if like, you're saying if. I know, not but this, I know I said if, but I know that this is going to work. I know this is going to happen. And it's just we a case have of when. When. Yeah. And there might be some tweets along the way, but 100%. I really have this strong feeling 
that we're just going to turn on a location, match it with a territory that we found that there's premises or that we found a premises that we might buy ourselves, which is another ball game altogether. Yeah. And then we'll match the two. Boom. Okay, we've done that. We've got that one next. And we target certain areas. Yeah. That fucking excites me because then me and you helping other businesses achieve the same goal with whatever industry they're in. That's massive. Do it again for me. Like, what do you what do you mean? Franchise? Do you mean anything? The- because if we, what we've done with funnels, what we've done, taking me from having no fucking clue about any of this, like completely different language, to okay, I get it. I've now moved all of my training programs over. I've created funnels. I've now created lead generators. You know everything you know about advertising and what works. Imagine if we can marry the two and all of that knowledge we both have and that we've created to help other business owners get their businesses out there in the same format. Whether it's, fran- I mean, it could just be franchise, but imagine if we can do that and then help Sanjay, for instance. I mean, he doesn't need the help because he's getting loads of leads in because of the name, but actually targeting. To I get think that he right could, person. yeah, like the. The top of his funnel could be way more refined. Yeah. If we aligned it mm. to what similar to what you've yeah. done. Yeah. I mean, you've just dropped this bombshell on me. I know. Just I'm now. sorry. And to be fair, I might just be riding your t- coattails because actually, this is all your business, isn't it? This is all you, your stuff that you do. No, not really. But I'm I just not a think... fat funnels expert by any means. But I feel like I'm a fucking Karcher expert now. <laughs> Love and <laughs> yeah I do actually I'm learning to love it more it it was the same when I set up teachable you just have to have certain size images for absolutely everything you'll do and you just need to know what that system and process is for setting up a training course and then the trigger that it does that and then the email automations however I'm learning about it but I'm also really happy to leave it in the hands of capable experts and I've worked with a couple now that are really fucking brilliant yeah, yeah, yeah. on Kartra yeah and I love Fiverr because you get to work with people all over the world yeah, which is yeah. really cool yeah I'm down for it you know I'm down you know I love working with you I'm down for being able to support other business owners with what they're trying to achieve I just feel like when you talk about funnels like you always think oh I don't know if I could do that it sounds massive and it is massive but it is one thing at a time yeah but it's so worth it rather than just spending a shit ton of money on social media advertising, hoping for the best. And I've seen so many companies do that. Yeah. Yes, this is slower. Yes, it's a lot more time consuming. Mm. Probably the same cost in the long run. It's just, it's actually making me more, <laughs> it's making me think about why don't I have a click funnel? <laughs> like, why is that not? I why don't haven't know. I? T- yeah. Okay. But then I was t- speaking to Trace mm. as a therapist. She needs to do it. She does, yeah. Because otherwise we're so reactive. We're just sending out emails. We're just sending out. We have all this information. Me and Yaz write blogs on a weekly basis. Mm. And I went to an event last week with Enfish. She's got a sales training, coaching company. She's yeah. brilliant at it. She mm-hmm. helps so many small business owners and bigger ones now. But I was on my table. I was talking to this lady who is in cybersecurity. She's got a business helping businesses Mm -hmm. with their cybersecurity. Brilliant. And she's from an IT background. Yeah. And she signed up for sales training because she's got a great business but doesn't know how to sell it. Yeah. You know, which is why everyone else is there. And I just said to her, who's your client? Who's your perfect client? (laughs) Who's the avatar? (laughs) Who's the avatar? What sort of businesses are you after? And she went... I want larger businesses and I really like it. And then we started working through like what she, what her blockers are, what she's struggling with. It was one of the activities on the table. And I said, well, what's the problem? Oh, that was it. It was like, so what? You know, when you go through it and you're like, so what? Yeah, yeah. So what? Such a good exercise. It's such a good exercise. So who are the, so who are the people you're trying to attract and what's their problem? Okay. So what, What, what's next? Mm -hmm. Why do you need to fix that problem? Mm -hmm. And we got through it. And it was such a simple change for her yeah. of actually she's focusing on the end user, but actually what they need to do is provide security to their customers. Yeah. And that's what it... Because it, it protects changing, their business. Changing the narrative yeah. rather than her trying to find new business with small, medium business owners. Mm-hmm. It's actually you're fixing a problem and why are they not doing it? And it was because they're scared because it's the unknown. Yeah. 
So they they need someone, they, to, they hold need someone to hold their hand. Yeah. They need someone to just come in and do it for them and teach them. They're scared. You know, what's the biggest problem for them? It's like, well, they're not providing a good service to their customers. Mm. And we got it and she was like, oh my God, that's actually really simple. Mm. And it will change everything about her advertising. But while we were doing that, and I said, you know, you just need to do blogs, do videos on like YouTube, teaching people about cybersecurity, like to change that narrative, make Mm -hmm. it a little bit more easier to digest and understandable because you're trying to capture people that don't understand any of it and they don't want to. It's like me with health and safety. No, it's so fucking boring. I'm doing it. I don't want to do it. Yeah. I don't love it. Like it's actually my least priority, but it should be my top. So I delegate it out. Mm hmm. And I said, that's how people feel that you're trying to speak to. So you just need to go in and say, well, let me help you. But also let me teach one of your employees to do it so you don't have to worry about it. Like I do with health and safety. And she was like, oh, my God. Mm. And then I told her about the book, They Ask You Answer, which I bang on about all the time. Yes, I shared that with someone the other day as well. And she wrote it down. I said, that will change everything for you. Your whole perception Mm -hmm. on marketing your business. Mm. They Ask You Answer changed everything for me Mm -hmm. so me and Yaz just focus solely on blogs yeah what can we put out there what can we do to educate people what questions are people asking Mm. oh it's just just so much and I love it I love it I should have been marketing shouldn't I yeah I get so excited about it yes you should have yeah marketing and branding there was a lot of branding people there last week were there brand yeah oh there was a lady actually I wanted to talk to you about that I'll talk to you about it now there was a lady who's a photographer yeah, and they've teamed up. Via, I think they've met through emphasis of like mm. men coaching program. I'm not sure, but they've now teamed up. And they're a really lovely collection of women mm. from all around this sort of area. Mm. One's a photographer, one's a branding expert, one is a web developer, one is a copywriter, and they've teamed up. And although they work individually, they're collaborating with another business that they've put together. Nice. Where you basically have like a one stop fits all like they where's the strategist huh where's the strategist oh i don't i think there's five of them i think there might be i'm not sure but yeah they basically go in you you can go you can use one or two of them or you can go with a whole new business model and then they do it all for you brilliant and i love their style as well because it's not too intimidating i think a lot of i've i've met a lot of companies like that yeah where it's very kind of, look at us, aren't we fabulous? We're going to make you take your photos outside a £10 million house in Chelsea and we all look like this with a hat and we all wear beige, you know, like... <laughs> oh, I feel like you've got that avatar down to a thing. <laughs> but there's so much of that mm. and actually that's not where I'm comfortable. I don't like that. I don't want to be with a photographer that is going to it's so and... fucking perfect and put me in that box because it, it, it's not me and I don't feel comfortable with that. But Are we going to get so... some photos done? Is that well, what you're yeah, so she has a business model. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, like get to the... Yeah, get to the point. I <laughs> know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so she has a business model where she works with entrepreneurs, brand owners, and for photo shoots. So the thing is that a photo shoot and all of that is quite expensive. It can be. Yeah. So she has this membership... £45 a month yeah. and then every other month there's six to eight of you that get together and go on to a different location and all have your photos taken individually but by her and she sends them to you. Brilliant. Isn't that cool? Can we join? Yes, I think we should. Yes. And then she said, and they, she does, so then you have seasonal photos. So every two months you'll have a different location. Yes, please. It's so cool, isn't it? For What's £45 pound a month. Yeah. I don't know. I'll oh. find it and put it in the show notes. Show notes. Show notes. It's really cool. And I was like, I want to sign up for that. I yeah, wanna... me too. Because also you'll meet loads of new people as well. Yeah, and she said everyone just mills around. She goes, but I was talking to her about how my perception of yes, brand really. shoots. <laughs> and she went, oh my God, it's the absolute opposite. I don't like that. She goes, yeah. I want to do it in parks. I want to go to pubs that have got like lovely little corners, nice bars. Little nooks. Yeah, she goes, I don't really want that really like perfected. Staged. I'm here with my perfect coffee, with my MacBook in this perfect, in a, you know, members club type thing. Yeah. And I said, because it just gives me the ick. I don't want those sorts of photos. And like my headshot is one of those sorts of photos and I hate it. Which one? The one the black you, the and white. One. Yeah, I just, it's the only one I've got. And she said, the thing is, you're going to need lots of different headshots for lots of different things. 100%. And she said, you need to build a backup. But yeah. it's 
Catalog. She goes, yeah, she goes, yeah. but it's really difficult to do that with one day shoot yes. that would cost a fortune. Yes. I love her. I know, Please. right? And she's like, so, and she's based around Toaster, I think. Somewhere nice, like not far. And so she said they, she does, tends to do it at locations around her. Yes. I know. I was like, I really love that. I really love that. Great shout. Yes. So let's get on that. We're going to sign up for that. Excellent. Imagine having six lots of headshots That's great a year. I obviously, um, you saw my post the yeah, day before yesterday. Yes. I'm now out of photos. Yeah. I All feel done. like the fist, we both had that, haven't we? The, the fist one under the chin. A bit dated now, isn't it? All right, dickhead. I literally <laughs> put the photo out the day before yesterday. Lovely photo. But mine's the same. Don't you ever look at it and go, oh, God. No. No? No. Oh, I, don't, I don't like any of mine. I don't. I, I don't. love your one that was actually a selfie. That was one of my favourites. When you're like, I think you've done it at your desk. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I've used that. That's and it's on all of my mm. profiles. Yeah, I need more. We yeah. need this lady. We, we do, need don't we? We need to go outside and yeah, yeah. Especially because I am not good at generating my own content, as you well know. <laughs> I fucking hate it. You really do. Don't you? I like doing it for everyone else. Yeah, I fucking hate it for myself. I like telling everyone else what is classic. You should be doing this. Yeah. Never take any of my own advice, ever. But we need her. That sounds fun. Yay, let's do it. I'll put her in the show notes and then anyway, well, should, we, should we book on first? before? Yeah, she gets please. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want it to blow up with all of our seven <laughs> listeners. Love you guys. Love you. See you soon. <laughs> We're done. Yeah, I think that's quite a long one. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. It just really came to like... Rrr! <laughs> shit to me no thanks do you want to do another end to that no oh okay that was an emergency stop <laughs> lovely it's over <laughs> fuck it's like you pulled out midway <laughs> genuinely alright bye then just going to push the mic out <laughs> oh that was so funny <laughs> It's like a gear change. No, full on emergency <laughs> stop. It's like you've pulled the, you know, in Top Gun when he pulls the fucking, he's out the top of the, but without the dime. Evacuation thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I had no clue. It's an absolute none. Brilliant. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to give us a cheeky follow, wild underscore moves. And if you've got anything that you want to hear from us or if you've got any questions, please just ping us a DM. We'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe. Bye.